give a little bit of background on the materials that we have developed in the Council of Europe and uh, uh, on which uh, Michalis will be, will be training educators in Croatia in just a few days from now. Um, we have developed a toolkit um, for uh, teachers, um, of, for language teachers, not only language teachers, I must say, for uh, um, helping migrants to uh, learn the language of their host country. Because after all, it is not just about learning the language. Language is a vehicle for much more. Uh, it, uh, it enables you to um, find your way around in um, a country um, by progressively um, acquiring this language. And it's not about reaching excellence, you know, in these languages. And this is what, how the toolkit is built. The toolkit will first help the educator to build a connection with um, uh, their target group and the linguistic and integrational needs that they have. And then uh, there are um, concrete examples like lesson plans on how uh, you would help migrants to uh, master everyday situations in, uh, in, in, their, in their environment. Uh, how do you recharge a mobile phone uh, a card with, with, with you know, data volume on it? Uh, you need to understand um, how that works. You need to communicate your need either online or offline. And all kinds of other seemingly so simple everyday situations which become so difficult when you do not master the language. So it is a set of very practical tools uh, that are tailored to the needs of newcomers um, with individually varying backgrounds. You it's know. for language support, not for language learning. It's for language support and not for language learning. That puts it in a nutshell. And that is very important. And that is the difference um, of this toolkit. Uh, it is obviously derived from educational knowledge about uh, how to impart uh, um, and deliver language support, but it's tailored particularly and specifically for the needs of migrants. All this is based on the uh, Common European Framework for Languages. Uh, many of you will know that. Uh, there is that self-assessment possibility to um, assess your own language uh, capacity ranging from A1, beginner's knowledge, uh, through A2, B1, B2, C1, C2, and C2 would then be an almost native speaker quality in that um, foreign language. Uh, that has come to be very widely used in, in, in Europe. Uh, it is a Council of Europe product, not everybody knows that, and we're continuing to, be to develop this also in view of uh, the different educational backgrounds um, of migrants, because this is our theme today. Uh, there are people coming to Europe who have a very limited formal educational background and who even in their own mother language, when it comes to reading and writing, for example, uh, uh, might, have, might have deficiencies. And of course, when it comes to learning another language, these factors uh, will have to be uh, taken into account as well. So we are now working on so-called descriptors these are, you know, bits of, 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 of text that describe the level of proficiency in the different um, um, aspects of language, reading, writing, producing, uh, receiving, and, and, and so on. So we're working on pre-A level one descriptors in order to better take into account uh, learning processes and, and curriculum requirements uh, for, for people who actually are below the A1 level as defined by the CFR. I don't want to get too technical now, just maybe one final point. Um, these um, proficiency levels increasingly play a role also in um, 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 citizenship and knowledge of society tests when it comes to acquiring the citizenship of a country uh, in, in, in which you live and would want to um, um, become
become a formal citizen. Um, that is not entirely in line with those who designed the CFR in the beginning, because now this is more and more used uh, for testing a proficiency that um, allegedly would qualify you to be a citizen, uh, but sometimes um, you can be a very good citizen and you can make a contribution to society and economy of a country without invariably, for example, being able to, to read, write and, and speak um, at B2 level of the language of the host country. So, so work is in progress to, to take increasingly account of, of, of these facts. And uh, now that uh, most countries are using the CFR, in, in citizenship tests. We are working um, um, with these agencies in the respective countries uh, to develop these tests fairly and to take account of the actual needs also of the society um, in an economic and social context um, and, and, and ask for more differentiation and not uh, just um, set overall levels um, of proficiency with which maybe even people who always have lived in that country might have a problem. So uh, that is work in progress, just to give you a little note on that. And uh, now we're increasingly working of uh, making uh, these products or these instruments uh, ever more useful um, as a, a component of working towards the integration of refugees. So.